philosopher we're going to talk about is John Rawls. Um, and before we talk about John Rawls, let's do a little experiment. All of you are going to be randomly placed in a society in five minutes. You don't know what role you are going to have in a society. So you could be a king, a slave, a cook, a hunter, anything. However, you can decide right now with everyone else um, how the society would be like. Remember that you should take into account the fact that you do not know your place in society in advance. So what society would you want to be in? Anyone know how to farm rice here? Farm what? Like rice. No, 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 no. Sorry. Right? I what meant like right? the general organization of society, not literally what you're going to do. Um, no, 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 because I'm, I'm saying that to build up on a rice, I mean an agricultural society. Oh. Well, uh, I, I would like to, to be in probably a democracy. A democracy, okay. That, that, that's definitely a good point. And why do you say that? Um, because like, because all the other types of governments fail a lot okay. and democracy still has, so democracy is not perfect, but like it still has a lot of good things. Mm, okay. Um, so I guess John Rawls would agree with you, Michael. Um, so the veil of, this is called the veil of ignorance. Um, it's called that because you're ignorant of what you're going to be in the society. So the veil of ignorance is this thought experiment proposed by John Rawls. Rawls claims that under the veil of ignorance, wait, am I lagging again? Can everyone hear me? A little. Can everyone hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So oh, Rawls claims that under the veil of ignorance, rational humans would design an equal or close to equal society so that they wouldn't have to get unlucky and become like a slave or something. Following this logic, Rawls proposed an equal society. Um, this is kind of like the theory of justice, which um, the veil of ignorance is kind of Rawls' justification for a more equal society. In this equal society, there would be equal basic rights and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to mute everyone because there's a lot of background. Um, so, you have equal basic rights. Does that mean that there'll still be place values? Like, Somebody's a manager, somebody's just a worker. Yeah, um, Rawls was not like a communist. I think Rawls just argued for a relatively equal society, something like a democracy. Well, there's got to be workers. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Um, so, okay. I want to get to the discussion. So any, any questions on Rawls or, or Locke or Hobbes? Okay, I'll just move on then. So, our discussion topic. Is democracy fundamentally good or is it just a Western cultural phenomenon? Western countries tend to promote democracy in non-democratic areas, claiming it to be a superior form of government. Like if you take a look at the US's heavy foreign intervention in foreign policy. This idea has been rejected in many primarily non-Western countries. So what does everyone think? What are the benefits, what are the inherent benefits of democracy that, are, that work that, regardless of whether or not you're Western? In democracy, like a lot of voices get heard, but like at the, at the same time, democracy is used as an extension of what Western force because many, um, because many of these um, of countries that received democracy through the Western plan were, were propped up by Western funds, you know, and, mm. and they were um, secretly, and they were like, whatchamacallit, you know, influenced by Western politics. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, first of all, to address the second part of your point, um, there's definitely, I mean, US foreign, US foreign intervention definitely isn't perfect. Um, but just talking about this isolated from that, just like, just talk about it like purely in theory. You mentioned that democracy lets more voices be heard. Um, so that's definitely a, um, a good point. If every voice is heard, if every voice is heard, it, it could, a lot of people could, no, completely, like, nothing at all about the topic, and just give a random answer. So if every voice is heard, much of, the, much of those voices might be bogus. Hmm. Yeah, 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 like, like, a lot of people can take other people out of context. Okay. Um, so I guess it goes back to the point are, about you know, the freedom of speech. <laughs> I 
I think that um, the, um, democracy isn't a great idea for a couple of reasons. First, is that you technically have no rights, even though you have a say in government. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. is really hypocritical. Um, they toppled the democratic regime of Iran to replace it with a um, monarchy just so they get their oil. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. very controversial. Uh, but just they, talking about it in like they're they're perfectly willing to to do a lot of things in the name of democracy, not just democracy itself. They're just the name in the name of democracy. Yeah. And, but remember, also, we're not discussing about Trump, the merits of U.S. foreign intervention. We're just talking about democracy in theory. They killed um, the, king, they they, the king of Egypt to, to put a puppet in there. That is true. And that's also very controversial. Also, okay. um, I feel like the U.S. doesn't do a good job of setting examples. Also, they don't really live up to those standards either because they they blame China for sending the police in the Hong Kong protest, but then they did the same thing it's, in the yeah. George Floyd yeah. protest. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely a lot some of hypocrisy stuff going on. Um, but yeah, going back to the discussion about democracy in a vacuum. Um, Susie so says, I think that democracy is good, but maybe it's not the only way to produce the common good. Um, so what are some other ways maybe? And while you take that, I'm just gonna go into the, the list of stuff that Britannica has. Um, so if you Google this and you click onto the Britannica entry, it gives 10 possible reasons why democracy would be a fundamental good. Um, I'm not gonna read all of them, but the important ones, this is kind of from like most con least controversial to most controversial. So some of the less controversial and more widely accepted ones include, democracy prevents rule from cruel and vicious autocrats. Modern democracies don't fight wars with each other. Demo dem democracies tend to be more prosperous. They tend to foster human development, tend to protect humans' fundamental interests, grant fundamental rights, broader range of personal freedoms, etc. So some of you said um, stuff like democracies allow more voices to be heard. And these, that's also definitely um, a fairly widely accepted benefit of democracy. But what about the ones on the bottom? Which one of these, especially eight, nine, and 10, does everyone not agree with? Does anyone, I mean? Is, oh, so, yeah. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, sorry. Oh, I think I'm having internet problems. To be the, yeah. Oh. yeah, you're back. I'm back. I had <laughs> internet problems. Um, yeah. Hopefully, this internet problem is better. Or hopefully, my internet's better. Um, okay. Sorry about that. Hold on. Let me set everything back up. Okay. So, Susie so says, I, well, I think countries believed in communism was thought as an ideal society until they dirty washed it during the Cold War. Okay, that's a valid point. Maybe, well, maybe we only think these way because, um, because we're influenced, like, I mean, most of us live in the United States, so. To be fair though, many things were washed over during the, during the, um, during the uh, Cold War. A lot of uh, democracy and communism was exposed to be not ideal. Mm. That, that's true, that's true. Um, okay. Um, um, all right. Wait, can I say something? Go ahead. I once saw saw on somewhere that like there was a pre I think there was a president that once went to that once said went to like the during the Cold War they went to the East Eastern Europe and said that democracy is not perfect but okay. at least we haven't had to build a wall to keep our people in. I think that was Reagan. <laughs> No, that was Kennedy. That's Kennedy. Okay. Well, like, um, well, like, well, like, I hate to be ironic here, but nowadays we are. We can tear down this wall, so that's definitely a bit ironic, I guess. Okay. Um, it's not to keep the people in, though. Eh, well, whatever. I mean, it's more back to keep to, back to philosophy. Back to philosophy, yeah. Um, so the point is that there definitely are some fundamental good parts about democracy, but there might also be some stuff that's controversial. So maybe democracy isn't this completely good thing that people in Western countries are led to believe. On the other hand, 
I'm not going to read this entire paragraph, but on the other hand, some of the, one of the biggest arguments against democracy is that some people are just incapable of participating in government in a meaningful or competent way because they lack the necessary knowledge, intelligence, wisdom, experience, or character. Um, so it's kind of Plato's- That's what I argument. said. Yeah. Um, so th there's actually this famous quote, I don't remember who said it, but it was something along the lines of, um, for the best argument against democracy, just talk to a voter. <laughs> um, so, so I guess that illustrates, I mean, I guess a possible problem with democracy. Um, which, I, think that, um, I think that the Tang Chinese um, way of administrating the government was the was a really good way because like they had a standardized test in China and then and then like anyone who passed the test, any capable person who passed the test got into the government. So like, and you had to be educated to get in the government. So any old crackpot can get go, go in the government. I mean, yeah, maybe, it was maybe, just but I mean, I guess the problem with that kind of government is that it's still biased towards the rich and the people that have no, like the competence, you know, because 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 like because like any because like any peasant who studied up could just ride to Beijing, pass the test, and become part of the government. There's a problem. There's the, I mean, that's if they can get to Beijing. No, it, it wasn't in Beijing. In second, the test. Sorry, no, not not Beijing. Chang Chang Xi'an, not Beijing. No, but the problem is they usually um tested stuff like history and essay writing skills. Yeah, so, mm, yeah, yeah, and that, they could learn that. that. Oh. Well, they they yes. still had a form of education one way or another. Okay, so, so there's definitely arguments for meritocracies, but there's also arguments against that. Like, for example, sure, some peasant could study up, but it's so much harder for them to study up unless, like, um, it's so much easier for a peasant, to, or harder for a peasant to study up than it is for someone that's rich and has, like, an educated dad or an educated teacher that can teach them and has a lot of books and stuff like that. That that that's that's true, but what I'm implying is that a peasant could do it. it a peasant that's that's could. true. That's true. So he says, "Is the democracy in the U.S. then not biased?" No, absolutely not. I think the or sorry, absolutely, democracy in the United States is absolutely biased towards the rich. Um, and yeah, you can you can see that from taxes and the gap between the rich and the poor. Um, that's but I mean, there's the argument of like who's more biased and maybe. U.S. democracy isn't per perfect, but maybe it's better. I mean, mostly I think that every government has a, is biased towards the rich because they're the ruling class. Also, mm. I think that um, authoritarianism and democracy is practically the same thing if the leaders aren't corrupt. Because um, South Korea had a corrupt president and people are now protesting about him. Mm. So, so I think it's the same thing if they're not corrupt. You could be true, actually. I think. I mean, you could be right. Uh, that's a valid point. But um. Okay. So it's seven o'clock, but there's one last thing that I want to add. Um. So that was it, I guess, for the political philosophy discussion. If you have any extra points, I'm gonna stay behind for about five minutes to address them. But first of all, future of the teen civic engagement program. Um, so as, as you probably know, this is actually the final meeting of the first course of the teen civic engagement program. Um, I intended for the first six meetings to be an introduction to philosophy and to give everyone an idea of what philosophy is, if they might be interested, and some knowledge about se several parts of philosophy. And so I think that we've achieved that. Um, I wanna thank everyone for being here, first of all. Um, it's been such a, such a joy for me to teach and I think I've learned a lot from teaching, hopefully, and hopefully y'all have learned some about philosophy. So it's been, it's been honestly really awesome to be able to teach everyone here. Um, however, um, this is the end of like this part, I guess this, this lesson thingy, but it's not the end of the program. Um, this program is gonna continue and we're gonna have future possible classes, programs, charter clubs, collaborations, etc all of which we're going to be, keep everyone updated on the email or on the WeChat group. Um, so there's a couple things that y'all could do if you're interested and want to continue. First of all, charter clubs. Um, so some of you might go to the school, a school either in the US or in China or somewhere else where there's no philosophy club or no club that's about civil discourse or civic engagement. Um, so let me, let me see. So if you're in one of these schools and you think that it would be worthwhile, I think it's worthwhile, to start a philosophy club or to start a club that's kind of similar to what we do here, I think it's absolutely a good idea for you to do that.
for those of you who, um, who, I mean, for those of you who are thinking about college, that's also a good thing to put on your college resume, I guess. If you were to have a club, we can have it as a shredder, part of the teen civic engagement program. So you would be the leader of the club, and then we could also be able to provide resources. Um, if you're going to try to do this, contact me if you need any help. I'm absolutely happy to help. I mean, my passion is philosophy, and I'm really passionate about sharing this with everyone else. And to expand the outreach of the program and to expand the number of people that we influence would be really, really, it would be really awesome for me. Um, another thing that we can do, as I, it says on the screen, is expanding outreach and advertising. Um, I really enjoyed these lessons. Thank you. I'm, I'm really glad you did. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, another thing is expanding outreach and advertising. Um, this program is definitely going to continue. And I think if we do, it's good to expand and get more people, get more opinions, get more diversity, all of that stuff. So if you're interested in helping me expand outreach and advertising, please email me. I'll put the email at the bottom in the chat. Um, so Alan actually created a website. Um, it's still kind of a work in progress. So I'll, I guess I'll email the website to everyone once it's more complete. Um, there's still some stuff that we should work on, I guess. But Alan, thank you so much for doing that. Um, so we actually have, I've mentioned this before in a previous meeting, but we do have a team that's working on advancing the teen civic engagement program and working on expanding outreach, working on the meetings, working on future lessons, et cetera. And so if you're interested in philosophy, if you're interested in helping me out, and if you're interested in, I guess, boosting your resume and joining the team and getting a position, then please email me and um, I'll talk to you. Uh, speaking of such team, uh, I haven't been received. Uh, have there been uh, any other meetings? Because I haven't been receiving the links for it. So, so we're going to meet actually probably sometime this week or next week. But All right, wonderful. After the first meetings, they have not. What should I add on the website? Because I'm technically, because um, I need like the information about everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you after this meeting. Okay, thanks. While everyone else is here, though, one last thing. Further resources. So if you're not interested in philosophy after this, then that's fine, I guess. Everyone is interested in different things. But if you are, then I would be really happy because philosophy, I think, is honestly so valuable. Not just purely philosophy, but also uh, so many applications to other stuff, as we talked about in the first meeting. So if you're interested in continuing to pursue philosophy, um, besides continuing with my program and building it up and joining the team, there's several things that you could do. There's a competition called the National Middle School Ethics Bowl or the National High School Ethics Bowl. Um, this is kind of like a philosophy contest that you could build a team at your school and compete in. If you do that, we can do it in a similar way as charter clubs. So you can reach out to me and I can get like coaches and get stuff to help you out. And then that would be part of the, our program. And also you would be the captain, I guess. So if that's something you're interested in, please email me. There's the Plato High School essay contest and other essay contests. If you're interested in writing essays about philosophy and possibly winning awards and sometimes winning monies or scholarships, please do search up um, philosophy essay contests. And same for that. If you need help on that at any time for me to read anything or for me to give ideas, email me. I'm more than happy to help. There's speech and debate. I'm sure most of you know about this. Um, kind of related to philosophy and a very meaningful activity. Community college courses is another one. Um, if you're really, really interested and if you want to have like a more formal education in philosophy. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy and the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy are kind of the Wikipedia for philosophy. They're all, all of the articles in there are written by professors or experts in their area. So all of the information you find in there is citable, it's very accurate and very interesting to read. So if you encounter something in philosophy that you think is really interesting, just search up Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy or Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy and read the article on that. Um, I've already talked about starting a philosophy club. If you're going to do that, please definitely email me and we'll talk about that as well. Finally, some books. I think so much of philosophy is about reading. Um, when I first got introduced to philosophy, I read and read and read. I read a lot of stuff because I thought it was fascinating. So if any of you, are, I guess, are kind of like me, here's some suggested books. And I'm going to send all of this information um, in a final email to everyone. So you don't have to be taking notes or anything. Um, intro reading, there's Justice by Michael Sandel, A History of Western Philosophy by Bertrand Russell, Problems from Philosophy by James Rachels. All three of these are very interesting introductory readings that um, are written in a way that is understandable, interesting, and informative. Finally, there's the classics. These are sometimes harder to read, but I would definitely recommend it to anyone who's interested. There's many books from Aristotle, Plato, Descartes, um, Kant, Hume, Nietzsche, John Locke, Hobbes, John Stuart Mill, and countless others. And all these classics are definitely worthwhile to read. So once again, I'm going to send all of this information. <laughs> 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 
Uh-huh. Um, sorry, I'm just going to mute everyone um, because there's a bit more stuff. So just to end it off, once again, thank you everyone so much um, for attending this program. Just to be clear, we are going to continue. Um, the program is going on, but we're not going to continue like next week. We're going to take a short break and then we're going to, for those of you who are interested in joining the team, we're going to figure out how we're going to do this moving forward, how we're going to expand, how we're going to make our um, program have more outreach, and how we're going to make it better quality. Um, I mean, this is something that this program, I think, is really valuable. I, I talked about this before in this meeting, but I think it's really valuable to have this kind of discussion um, that's not polarized and that's not about attacking the opponent. And so this is something that I definitely want to see continue after next year, even after I graduate and go to college. So this is something that if you're interested in and you join the team, you would probably be able to lead this with a group of other members on the team once I graduate. And I guess you would teach the same things and we would expand the program to have more than just an introductory course and things like that. Um, Will you still do this when you're, um, after when you graduate college or you're just going to move on? I think that, I mean, it's, it's hard to look so far ahead. That's like in six years, um, really hard to see that far ahead. But I think that this is something that I do want to continue. So perhaps. Yeah. And you can like be like the, um, see advisor you know, or something. Huh? It's, 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 yeah. been, it's been really memorable. Uh, I, I've, 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 lo I've loved these. It's been, it's, it's been, yeah. a, it's been an excellent pastime during quarantine. So I definitely like to participate in a lot more of these events. Wait, mm. um, thank you. I have a question to ask. Yeah. So, um, you know how me and Anthony, we both live in the East coast. Mm -hmm. So, um, when it, when, um, let's, let's just say quarantine ends, mm -hmm. um, well, since you guys are in California, so like, let's, so like, I can't like, um, I can't like just drive all the way there. Take take like ten, take, take like a few days. You don't you you don't really drive to California. Are, are, are we still have like an online session about this, like as a part or like? Yes, yes, we're probably going to move completely online because I think that just having sessions in California is too limiting. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. That that's what that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thanks. Awesome. Um, and if you're on the East Coast and if your school doesn't have a philosophy club, I think, I mean, once again, great idea to surround one. Um, yeah. Me and Anthony are going to the same school. So mm. we can start one. Middle year. school, middle school. Yeah, yeah, middle school. And then um, we can just say that, oh, we work for, um, let's just say, the, um, the Scene Civics Education Program. So like. And I'd be happy to provide any resource guidance or help or anything. We work for Big Brain Philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you everyone for, um, I guess, supporting this course. Um, what, one thing, one really quick thing is that, oh, that's not the right one. Hold on, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, one really quick thing is that in order for this course to continue, I think it would be helpful if we had reviews. And so Anthony, we were originally gonna, I was originally gonna use the website, or not Anthony, Alan, I was gonna use the website that you made, but I think it was easier to do it on Vix. So here's just a temporary thing. Yep. So here's the website for reviews. I would appreciate it so much if you could go up there and leave a review on like what the program was like, what we did well, what was your favorite, what could we improve on, what was the quality, things like that. Um, and that would be really awesome. Um, so um, yeah, I guess any, any last questions? Um, the website I'm making, I already have like a contact us thing. So, well, yeah, we can use this for like until yeah, yeah. We, we can um, move, yeah, we can yeah, move yeah. more to your website after that's like more complete, I guess, because I think it's a bit easier for Wix. Okay. Uh, wait, can I, can I ask you a question about philosophy real quick? Yeah. Wait, so like, I mean, it's more about the U.S. government, but like, does the Electoral College Act, is it actually made of people? Yeah. No, no, it's, it's like majority area. Oh, also like, well, yeah, if you think about that, well, is it possible to like, to instead of have members of Congress and, and the president maybe just have, have them as, just have the, like, cause they're, they're not necessarily a vehicle for, directly for the, 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 and proportionally representing the views of the people. So, I mean, I think I've heard in Switzerland, it's more like that, where like, mm. instead, of, instead of their leaders that people elect, it's more like just the people put in ideas and stuff. So and it's kind of like a direct democracy. I think a direct democracy is um, 
maybe it's better theoretically, but it's really hard to have a direct democracy in a country so large and so diverse as the United States. Yeah. In the I United know. States, your vote matters more depend, depending on where you live. Like, say, um, if I live in Texas, the Electoral Anthony, College is so big that, you know, I think it, Anthony, it would matter in, in an election. You realize the, um, the, the votes that we actually do are the popular vote and the actual votes that count are the electoral votes? Yeah, I, 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 I never liked that voting. system. So also, the Electoral College is, is, is super useless and kind of dumb. Electoral College is questionable. I mean, th- there's I been definitely calls to abolish the Electoral College system. Um, so, maybe your point is valid. The Electoral College sucks. <laughs> uh, high, debatable, but okay. It's debatable, yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, for those of you all still here, Hit me up with an email if you want to join the team or if you have any questions. I checked um, your site and there's a lot of insert information here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a work in progress. Yeah, that's why I gave the, um, here's the other site here. This one's slightly more complete. And yes, electrical college is not an actual college. <laughs> For those of you on the team, we're going to have a team meeting discussing the future of this program and how we're going to go forward. Wonderful. Either this week or next week. I'm not completely right. sure. Could, could you that... send all of us the, the link uh, yeah. seven yeah. days yeah. in advance? Because I'll always, uh, I'll, okay. I'll always freak out if I don't have the link to something. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do that. You did show Donald Trump graduated from the Electoral College. Uh, no, he debated, he uh, graduated from some college in New York. I, don't know. I think he graduated from Penn. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, regardless, it's been awesome, everyone. I'm about to end the meeting. So, All right, thank you. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. I enjoyed your classes. I'll miss teaching everyone. I mean, we're going to continue, so no need to be sad. <laughs> Bye-bye. Adios. When do, you expect to, when do you expect to do it next time? Um, in a couple of weeks or months. Probably, we're going to start by the, we're probably going to start sometime in the summer. So not, not so long. Isn't it already summer? Well, it's just the beginning of summer, so. So yeah, bye everyone. Again, for the fourth time, I think.